the, the conditions overall were, were excellent. But unfortunately for the power and the, the Bulldogs, they got the worst of their conditions. It absolutely poured with rain at Adelaide Oval. But that was a, that, I thought that suited both teams. It was going to be a tough contest in and around the ball. Both coaches like their players to play that way. And in the end, Kingy, it was really Butters who I think was the, the standout performer. Yeah, love the game of Butters. It's probably the best game he's played for some time. Mm. He's 22. He's played 80-odd games of footy. He's about cherry ripe to go bang and really make a name for himself and become the player they'd hoped that he'd become. But it was, it was Butters and, and, and Horn Francis in that fourth term that ripped the heart out of this game and, and, and actually separated the game, which is terrific for Port Adelaide fans to get excited about where this midfield's going with some spark players that can do different things. But I just love his uncompromising attack on the footy. He's a small player, but he's got a huge heart. He doesn't care about getting hurt. He's not intimidated by other bodies. In and out of traffic there twice. Uh, he, he's a guy that understands space, so he will exit stoppage and, or, or exit uh, congestion. I loved his game. He got a lot of footy. I know he got 30-plus footy disposals, but it's more where he wins it that I love. And I just think that Jason and Zach doing this, stepping out and challenging the opposition straight away to go into full defensive mode is something we don't see a lot of young players do. No, you're right. And I reckon these two, and we touched on it, complement each other really well with their size and their style, but they both had 11 disposals, four clearances each, and seven contested possessions each in that fourth quarter. They were enormous. And what was great about it is, for so long, it's been Wines and Boke, or Wines, Boke and Robbie Gray when he played. And now we've got the, the new generation stepping in there and winning the game for them. Because it wasn't arm wrestle up until that fourth quarter. The game was there to be won, and it was those two who went and won it. So the difference in that vision, Kingy, was... Butters clean, everyone else was fumbling around, yeah. double grabbing the footy, he was the only one who didn't. And you get a lot of confidence out of that. If you're Zach Butters, you go, you know what, I can, I actually, I can do this and I should do this more regularly. And it gives Ken some flexibility now with Boke and Wines. He can mm. put them in the forward line. He can put, look, Ollie Wines at full forward is no mug. Yeah. He, he, those sorts of players in your forward line, they've got, the, they've got a different blend down there at the moment. That's working okay as well. But, um, you know, they, I think they've got, they've got a, new, a new edge about them now. And, and credit to those guys for taking the, the steps they have over the last couple of you weeks. You mentioned Jason Horn francis big last quarter, then 12 disposals in the, in the last quarter. Before we have a quick chat, let's hear what Ken Hinckley had to say about his start. Jason Horn francis is 19. So, some part of it's really annoying me about the way people are treating him. It's annoying me. Um, he's never going to play four quarters every week. He's 19-year-old. If you're treating my 19-year-old son the way some people treat it, have treated him, I'd be embarrassed by my, by my performance if I was those people. I think it's been really unfair. The kid made a courageous decision to come home. Let the kid play footy. Treat the kid with some respect. And I, and I tell you what, some people who put pressure on kids in this game need to have a good hard look at themselves. That's what I love about Ken Hinckley. I know Jordy Lewis is, was strong on this too, uh, post, post game, but I agree, I've got a 20-year-old. If my 20-year-old was treated like, like that, mm. you'd, be, you'd be sticking up for him big time. Yeah, so, especially the booing. I mean, it's, it's, I agree. it's not necessary. And, I mean, we've spoken about some of his, his stuff, but he's got, a flaw, he's got flaws in his game. But as he keeps saying, he's 19 years exactly. of age, but we can see what he's going to be, and he's going to be a star. Yeah. What were the origins of this? I mean, you've got to cut to the chase. Kane Corns put this on the radar with the rubbish about ice baths, that he was mm. sacked from North Melbourne because of not taking ice bath. And that flared the nostrils of the North Melbourne fans. Yep. And they've been going backwards and forwards at each other for six months. And unfortunately, Jason Horn francis has been the sole victim in all of this. It's, it's built a tension and a passion and a rage that wasn't really there. I think the North Melbourne fans were happy to part company. Okay, it doesn't always work out yep. for every player that gets drafted. He wants to go home, get the big deal. We sat it on 360 last year and we said, you know yeah, what? You're consistent yeah, with you want to go, 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 go off. We'll you move work. on, we'll get the next person in the door and we'll go again. No one's bigger than a footy club, right? You go again. But the rage was started the moment hashtag ice bath was put out there. Mm. So every time he does something, the fan base go, beauty, we've got an angle. Now, the Kangaroos fans weren't there to boo on the weekend, no. So you can't necessarily blame those people um, that have been... I think targeted unfairly by those looking to make excuses. Jason Horn Francis is going to be a star of the competition. We all know that. Um, I, I don't think uh, I don't think it would be as big a deal uh, if the last six months of back to and fro mm. 
uh, hadn't, hadn't taken place. Well, him and Butters separated the game. In the first half, it was Marcus Bontempelli, though, that was absolutely on, on fire. Once again, it was, it was going to be Bont that I thought was going to put the dogs on his shoulders he, and get him, over for, get him over the line for three wins in a row. He was going to rip the heart out of Port Adelaide. He had the 15 disposals, but 10 clearances at halftime. And we know about Bont's clearances. They are better than most people's clearances. His ability to get from inside to outside with his kicking skills. But then at halftime, or just late before that, uh, they Ken Inkley put Will and Drew to do the tag. Get the backpack on and say, you know what, we have to stop this guy from beating us single-handedly. And in the second half, he only had the eight disposals and just two clearances. So it is possible. You can actually, you can actually take away the, the greatest strength of the opposition and limit his impact. And I think now it's something that other teams need to put a, put a stop to because he's had 31 clearances in the last three weeks, Marcus Bontempelli. Ever since, King, I think you spoke about it, that he said, you know what, I'm the, I'm the hit two target. You know, mm. he, he tried to play a bit different the first couple of weeks and they might have got a bit too cute, the Western Bulldogs. But since he's been the main man, he's destroying teams. So you can put the clamps on him, and uh, and that's what Will and Drew was able to do, and it made a big difference to helping them win the game. Essendon and Melbourne played played out an excellent game, I thought, at uh, at, at the Adelaide Oval. Essendon, though, Kingy, how, how did they do it? Because I, coming from Mount Barker, we saw three three quarters of it, and I thought when I walked in, I thought, okay, well, Melbourne will start responding here. They'll, they'll get their game going, but. Essendon were all over them pretty much for the entirety of the game. It was the complete game, really. Mm. Um, but I just want to ask like one facet, and we've seen this before from Essendon, but it just looked it looked crisp, it looked organised, it, it was purest of football out of the back line. They kicked uh, seven goals out of their back half, and they made Melbourne look second rate. Their handball game and their run and gun it was in sync. Now, this is hours and hours of pre-season training, a, a system and a style that clearly Brad's uh, implementing. Have a look at Darcy Parrish here. He, he's, he's, he's want to stay involved. Uh, oh, there's a previous one as well that I'll show, I'll show sh shortly. But you can just see here the run, the gun. We know what we're going to do. You've got to turn up. You've got to, you've got to keep running. You've got to keep flowing because you may get an, a secondary opportunity for possession. And they just sifted their way through them. And I thought it was brilliant. I, I love the fact that it can end up with anyone in the forward line. It doesn't have to be Jake Stringer all the time. It didn't, they didn't have the big bopper down there on the weekend. But have a look at this. Oh, that, that's just Shame. terrific to watch, isn't it? They and faced they, the game. It was turned their yeah, shoulders and faced the forward game. Forward handball as opposed to Essendon in the look past. At, look, at the, backwards. look at the science where they've got some spread. They've got some, they've got some width to those handballs. So you, once they, you know, we keep saying it, taking the game from inside to out. And as soon as you can do that, the damage comes on the game. Here we go again. Turning up. Bang. Slip it through. Turning up. Bloke on the inside, bang. It's just, it's really calculated. There's method to the madness. Okay, you get a bit lucky every now and then going inside Ford 50, but I was, I was taken by their handball game. So the positive of Essendon caused the negative of the Ds. What did you see with the Melbourne footy club? Yeah, for as great as Essendon were, Melbourne, Melbourne were off, and particularly somewhere where it's been their greatest strength, and that's defensively. And we'll just take a look at some vision because this is only the second time in, in over 70 games that Melbourne have conceded 100 points. And for me, there was, a, there was something that was obviously missing in this game. And if you can see these clips here about Melbourne players just staying on their men and watching these high balls. So this is when Melbourne did force Essendon to kick high balls. The impact of not having Jake Lever was significant without him. They looked vulnerable without Jake Lever because he would kill this ball. He would be the one coming across and either intercept marking or getting a fist in it because he's the number one intercept player in the game at the moment, averaging 10 a game. The only other defender that's above average for intercepts this year is, is Angus Brayshaw, who's getting them more at ground level. So they were, they were waiting and thinking, OK, we're used to Jake Lever coming across here and bailing us out. And Essendon had 31 shots from 57 entries. That never happens against Melbourne. Like these, these aren't pure entries that you go, you know, high balls good going luck in, that they? you can't defend. They, they were balls that normally they would, get, uh, they would get killed. So I think it highlighted how important Jake Lever is to Melbourne's system. Um, Stephen May's been slightly off this year. Adam Tomlinson came in, had his hands full against the big boys but uh, I think it's interesting we've given so that was in the first half Melbourne normally averaged 13 marks a game intercepts then he took two mm. in the first half and they allowed 10 intercept uh, 10 marks inside their 50 they normally allow that for a game so look we gave them a mulligan against Brisbane and said you're never going to have five goals kicked against you in a defensive 50 stoppage game again I don't know if they're going to do that again and concede that many points and play that badly, but it's on watch next. It's twice in five weeks. They've just been off defensively inside their D50, which has been their one wood. How much are they missing Max Gorn then? Oh, of course, Max is we a, can understand a that. candidate for the best player in the comp. But, um, yeah, you go to your, your backup Ruckman, who's a high price recruit. Mm. You know, he's probably on... It's not about money. It's about what you have to deliver when, deliver. You, when you get those stamps on the, on the, or stripes on the shoulders. You, you need to deliver. Now, to me, defensively, he was way off. 
the Ruckman, and it's not all uh, Brody's fault, but they kicked five goals between them. Uh, he was in those packs more often than not. The previous goal is this goal here that you just showed. It's a big spoil. Now, he had, he had 30 seconds to make up the ground on Draper mm. and didn't. Now, he tried to hand over, so I'll give him a small out there. Mm. But your job and your responsibility is to cover the opposition Ruckman. And it's a test of wills both ways. Draper charging forward, Grundy charging forward. But when you get it wrong, you've got to be able to recover. Now, I'm not, I'm, he's not the greatest athlete in the world. He's not the best runner in the world. I, I understand all that. But if you can push forward, you, you can gotta, push You've got to hand over with urgency. Yeah. I think that's the, the no, key. You, you can't just job. fly. Yeah, no, do the job. But if you are going to, you've got to show some urgency in that. You can't just float down and point. And you, you've got to show some endeavour to make your teammate cover you off. And if you don't have that endeavour in your voice, in your energy to push that extra bit, they're not going to listen. They're not going to hear you. It's not going to happen. Yeah. You, you lose credibility in the group. If, if defensively you're mm, like that. Yep. That's right. The, the, you won't get support of the, of the 22. So, Max, I've got no doubt Max Gorm will say, hey, mate, this group here, they're not used to the Ruckman not pushing back at full, full pace, mm. at full tilt. They've seen me do it for years. You've got to step up. You've got to raise the bar. Well, a big challenge over the next couple of weeks for, for Brodie Grundy to, uh, to, to get that part of his game exactly right.